Good evening. If you will bear your head for a moment of silent prayer. Good evening and welcome to Murfreesboro City Council, August the 12th, 2010. I um, have a number of items of business uh, tonight, so uh, first thing that we want to look at is our consent agenda, and it's quite an extensive consent agenda. It's been several weeks since we have met, so there may be some questions regarding items on the consent agenda. If there are, now would be a good time to ask about those. And if not, I'll accept a motion that we will accept our consent agenda as it has been presented. motion to accept the consent agenda so moved second thank you you have a motion second please call the roll vice mayor bratcher aye mr dilly aye miss gales harris aye mr washington aye mr young aye mayor bragg aye you also have before you the minutes of a special meeting held on july the 12th and a special meeting held on july the 15th if you've had an opportunity to review those minutes are there any additions or deletions, corrections to those <coughs> minutes as they have been presented? I move we approve the minutes as presented. Second. All right, you have a motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on second reading an ordinance to rezone an area along Greenland Drive and North University Street, Area 4, to General Office Residential OGR District. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on second reading an ordinance to annex an area located north of Franklin Road and east of Veterans Parkway and to adopt for the same a plan of services. Move for its passage. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. On this next issue, we have uh, on second reading an ordinance to zone an area, bulk zoning highway commercial. And the last time we voted on this on first reading, I voted no uh, for this bulk zoning. And since that time, I have been uh, to, made to understand, I think, from our financial community and others that we have a very difficult uh, borrowing and lending environment and in order for some people to move forward on uh, commercial pieces of property it's very difficult if they're zoned residential or if they're zoned some way that a lending institution cannot find out whether that property is commercial or not and whether a government body has would allow commercial usage so taken in that light, I think that I will change my vote on this particular uh, issue and also be a little bit more sensitive to the uh, bulk zoning that we have until I find that we need to uh, go back to the PCDs and PRDs that we have had in previous times. And so uh, when we do vote on this, I would like to alert the council that I will change my vote to yes 
and it will not make any difference because on the first vote, all the other council members voted yes and I voted no. So at this time, we'll consider for passage on second reading an ordinance to zone an area located north of Franklin Road and east of Veterans Parkway as Highway Commercial, CH District. Move for the passage. Second. Right, motion and second. May, I would like to mention, uh, along with what the comments you had made, that we had made those at the last meeting that uh, I think Planning Commission and staff, we, we have increased and raised the bar on the requirements. That, so we're, it's not like it used to be. We, we've made it a little bit more stringent on, right. on, the, uh, on the standards. So. Well, and it's just, it is just, uh, first of all, somebody's not going to bring something to our council that hasn't been recommended by our staff. So uh, if, if they do, it's, it's probably not going to be accepted. So I think, I think one of the one of the things that was brought up earlier was the uh, I think the Publix on 99 was Mr. Uh, lot was a uh, just a bulk zoning lot if if I if I'm my memory serves me correctly and I think that's a, that's a building if you've ridden by it looked at it it's something that's I think the community can be proud of and that development was just on a bulk blanket zoning if you will right all right you have a motion and a second any other questions or comments please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider recommendations of the Planning Commission regarding scheduling a public hearing to considering zoning ordinance amendments with regards to specialty restaurants, i.e., tea rooms, coffee houses, etc., and changeable copy signs, and rename a segment of Manson Pike to the Bill Smith Drive. Good evening, Ms. Adelot. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Bragg, members of the council. During its regular meeting on August 4th of 2010, the Merciful Planning Commission considered and recommended approval of the following matters, and they need to be scheduled for public hearings. And the first is a zone ordinance amendment concerning specialty restaurants, tea rooms, uh, coffee houses, et cetera. And that came out of our study for the CM zones around the hospital uh, that we've been undertaking this summer. And the second is some zone ordinance amendments concerning changeable copy signs, and that has to do with the uh, signage that the uh, council placed a, a moratorium on earlier this year, and that is to move that forward so that can be removed. Uh, these just need to be scheduled for public hearings. All right. Ms. McGannon? Mayor, I would suggest September 23rd. All right. September 23rd, council members. Is that date agreeable with you? No objections um, with anyone's calendars, Mayor. I move we uh, set public hearings for September 23rd. All right, September 23rd for a public hearing. Is there a motion? You have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, a motion is second for a hearing on September 23rd. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Also, during the August 4th meeting, the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing to consider renaming a portion of Manson Pike that will be detached from the remainder of the street as a result of the realignment of Fortress Boulevard, Gresham Lane, and Manson Pike that are currently under construction. The Planning Commission voted to rename the street segment to Bill Smith Drive in honor of Mr. Bill Smith, who resides along the street and whose family has lived in the area for many years. I may add, actually, for several generations. The City Council is requested to vote in concurrence on this matter, and no public hearing is required. I did include an illustration, and I think you may have had a study that Mr. Blomley prepared. Uh, he did a very good job on his study, and I think it was very helpful for the Planning Commission to help sort out this uh, renaming and some other actions it took for names and addresses for the new roadway alignment. All right, any questions of Mr. Adelot regarding this recommendation to uh, change the name of this uh, section of Manson Pike that will to Bill Smith Drive. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. You have a motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. And one more item on that. Uh, this should take effect when the uh, construction is complete, and we'll establish a date to properly notify the emergency agencies and the other people who, whose address will be affected, and it will take effect as the street is opened up for traffic. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. 
This time we'll consider recommendations of the Transportation Director regarding bids for construction of the Stones River Greenway Extension Phase 3 and CCTV and Traffic Signal Interconnect Project. Mr. Richardson, welcome. Good evening, Mayor Bragg, Members of Council. I do have the two items for your consideration. On the first item, uh, the City received bids on June the 29th for the construction associated with the Stones River Greenway Phase 3. Uh, we did uh, receive uh, seven bids on this project, and the low bid was submitted by Curl Construction in the amount of $512,931.28. And, and based on the recommendation of the project design firm, uh, Los Associates, and concurrence of the Department of Transportation, after their review, we'd recommend award of the low bid to Curl Construction and approval contract between the city and Curl, uh, subject to approval of the legal department, substantially is shown as, as the contract in your package. And I should also point out that the uh, construction is being 80% uh, federally funded, and the city of Murfreesboro would be picking up the 10%, uh, which was approximately $103,000. And uh, this would be uh, paid through TML loan. Happy answering questions. Question. Any questions? Um, Mr. Young? Mr. Richens, when is the completion date on this project? How many days? The uh, phase three construction is uh, 150 calendar days, so that would put us out to about the end of January 2011, uh, you know, certainly what, depending on the weather during that time frame, but uh, that's what we're looking at. Early spring, ready to go. Excuse me? Early spring? Yes. Thank you. Other questions, Mr. Gill? <laughs> Dana, our experience with curl construction is we, we have not had any experience personally using them as a construction company. Uh, I, I did talk to our design engineer, and they have uh, checked their references. Uh, they received uh, excellent references from five or six uh, people that they didn't have done municipal projects with, and they are also on TDOT's pre-qualified list as a construction company. Okay, good. Where are they based? Out of War Trace. Oh, well, that's out of town, right? <laughs> Somewhat. We used to didn't have a side of town. It was just town. <laughs> <laughs> that may be why there's so much cheaper travel that, expenses are low. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions regarding this recommendation? Move for approval. Second. All right. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you. Uh, on our second item, this deals with uh, our closed circuit television traffic signal interconnection uh, project. Uh, Y'all may recall that a few weeks ago <coughs> that you did uh, approve the construction bid uh, for this. Uh, we are now trying to get in place uh, our required uh, construction engineering uh, inspection company and contract. Uh, we uh, did receive proposals in uh, April, and six proposals were submitted by uh, several engineering companies. And uh, we also had a consultant evaluation committee, as we're required to do through the TDOT projects uh, that are uh, issued under a request for proposals. Uh, the committee openly uh, selected a Wiser Company as preferred firm. And we have been in <coughs> negotiations uh, with them for the contract, and that's, re that's resulted in uh, the preparation of contract documents between uh, Wiser Company uh, for these services. And uh, we'd recommend approval uh, of the contract between the city and Wiser Company for these CEI services with an estimated cost of $154,722.52. Uh, I would remind you that this uh, project is 100% uh, uh, federally funded through the uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Could you briefly explain the project? Though? Sure. Uh, this is a project uh, that we've been working on for some time. Uh, this is uh, an upgrade of a system that was initially uh, put in for our closed circuit television system back in 1998. Uh, this was uh, the pilot project or the first system in the state of Tennessee to be done. Uh, we've uh, got a pretty good bit of time on the equipment and stuff that's out in the field, and you can imagine uh, the electronics and things over a 12-year period in that harsh environment uh, have pretty much used up their useful life. We're in the process of replacing the original ones and then adding an additional 11 new cameras, which will give us a total of 33. Uh, that accounts for a lot of the growth of the city since that uh, point in time, where we've expanded out 231 North, uh, 96 out toward Veterans Parkway, and so forth. 
This would also include uh, the installation of uh, some additional fiber optics, approximately eight and a half miles uh, more of that to pick up the additional cameras, and also would uh, pick up the interconnection of uh, the traffic signals, the additional traffic signals along these routes, plus some of the existing traffic signals along the routes of Murfreesboro that were uh, interconnected back to our traffic operations center back in uh, the mid-80s with a hardwire interconnect. This would also uh, upgrade all the electronics and so forth in our traffic operations center. So it's uh, to a large degree uh, would be a, a new system. We were, we've been well served by the old system, but uh, if you've watched Channel 3 lately and looked at the traffic cameras, you note that a bunch of those are out and we're looking to make those replacements. All right, any questions regarding this uh, recommendation? Again, I know this is 100% federal funded. This is 100% uh, federally funded, and I won't, I won't qualify that. That's 100% federally funded up to the uh, $1 million right now, including the construction bid and uh, the CEI services. We're about at $1,003,000. Uh, we put in place a mechanism uh, several months ago uh, through our capital improvement budget through the MPO to anything above and beyond the $1 million uh, would be funded with another federal funding source, which is an 80-20 uh, funding source. So as a backstop uh, for going over a million, uh, we're only obligated to pay for 20% of anything over a million. Other questions? May I move we approve the recommendations of our transportation director? All right, you have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher? Aye. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. Thank you. At this time, we'll consider recommendations of the Parks and Recreation Commission regarding a request for approval to make application for matching grant funds to renovate Kids Castle Playground and surrounding family picnic areas at Old Fort Park and to adopt a resolution authorizing an application for a local parks and recreation fund grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to assist with the renovation of Kids Capsule Playground and the surrounding family picnic areas at Old Fort Park and committing matching funds in the amount of 200000 if awarded this grant. And let me mention that we have a new person uh, in a new position, although it's not a new person to our Parks and Recreation Department. For the last nine years, Angela Jackson has been with the City of Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department, and she has a tremendous background uh, uh, university in Tennessee at Freed Hardman, and then evidently went off to the wilderness for a little while to uh, Maine and Colorado and Alaska. So she has an extensive outdoor background and likes outdoor. So we're very pleased that uh, she joined the city in 2001 as a program coordinator at the Wilderness Station in 2003. She was a program coordinator for our Greenway and Wetlands, and she created programs including the Small Fry Tri triathlon, triathlon for preschoolers on the Greenway and the Greenway Arts Festival. 2005, she was a Middle Tennessee Environmental Administrator of the Year for the Tennessee Environmental Education Association and was Distinguished Young Professional of the Tennessee Recreation and Parks Association in 2008. So we're very pleased to um, have her take over our Assistant Parks and Recreation Director position, and we're glad that she's here tonight to present these recommendations. And I know Lanny is pleased to have you here, and especially to help us figure out how to spend some money that we think will enhance our community and uh, make our Parks and Recreation Department even better for the city of Murfreesboro. Welcome, Angela. Thank you, it's an, it's an honor to be here. I wanted to um, come before you tonight to ask for approval to apply for a grant and to designate matching grant funds for Kids Castle Playground and the surrounding family picnic areas at Old Fort Park. As most of you know, Kids Castle Playground was built by volunteer community efforts 15 years ago, and since that time has been extremely successful. There were a lot of people that, that 
put a lot of work into making that playground what it um, has been. And it's become what we've called a victim of its own success. It has really deteriorated over the years and become in need of total renovation. So that's what we are looking to do. And uh, what I would like to ask is um, that we be able to renovate the playground with new features and elements that are safe, fun, age appropriate, and accessible to all. Um, and in addition, around the playground area, we wanted to accentuate the family picnic space with a small shelter and some designated picnic areas around that playground as a part of this funds. Um, we want to use materials that will be long lasting and low maintenance, allowing families to enjoy the space for, um, for generations to come. The grant is through the Tennessee Parks and, um, this, excuse me, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, as you mentioned before, and it is looking for um, what we need is $200,000 in matching grant funds for a 50-50 match for a total of a $400,000 renovation project. And we need to pass a resolution. Um, as a matter of record, it's 10R24 for that resolution. And to also request that the mayor be authorized to sign the documents necessary for the grant um, submission. Do you have any, any questions about the project? Any questions for Ms. Jackson? Mayor, I'd like to ask, what's the timeline on this? Is, will your grant be awarded in 90 days, 120 days? We have not been given an award for um, a, a deadline for the <coughs> award at this time. I'm, I'm not sure. Hopefully soon. Mr. Young, we've also included the funding um, for this city's match uh, in the uh, capital improvement plan that you'll be receiving uh, later on this month. Uh, the legal department's been working with Parks and Recreation also on the bid documents for this so that when, uh, if and when we do get the grant, we'll be in a position to move quickly. So uh, we know the playground needs uh, some work. Uh, we're trying to get ready for that uh, with the grant. Thank you, Ryan. Vice Mayor. No. Mr. Gilly. If we chose to do, in other words, is the $200,000, is that what you have to apply for or is there a... What I'm getting at is I have a hard time spending a total of $400,000 given what our economy and the budget has been this year to renovate the playground. I, I just I have a very hard time with, even if it's $200,000 that's in a capital improvement project, spending that on the heels of what we've just finished spending renovating the sports comp pool and, and, and that sort of thing. I just have a really hard time with that. If there's less that we can do and still apply for a matching grant to, to, to scale this back, I would be willing to consider that. But I just can't go along with spending $200,000 right now plus another $200,000 in, in grant money on the I, renovation. Right, right. I understand where you're coming from. I think that what we have to look at, the existing playground and the playground as it was built 15 years ago um, has so many different features. It encompasses uh, 200,000, um, I'm sorry, 20,000 square feet of space, um, had a lot of different play elements. If there was a measurable term of play value, We'd like to have an equal experience there. And in order to, to build a space that has, um, that will be long lasting, low maintenance, and, and a lot of fun for our children, we, we want to make that investment now. And, and that's why we have asked for, for the amount that we have asked for. To, to answer your question directly, it is possible to apply for, it for less money, yes. I mean, we've just finished a budget where we've asked our city employees to bear with us and wait until uh, February or so to, to see how revenues are before we look at it raises in that sort of thing and now we're looking at spending this kind of money on a playground at a time of the year when the kids are getting back in school and the peak season for it is is past and i just wonder if there's something that we can put off doing um, until the economy is better this particular grant um, application has been given will be given priority plan priority points for playground renovation if the city were to spend two hundred thousand dollars now and we're going we're going to have to do something in order to to keep this playground open to, to the public uh, we don't know that there's going to be another grant and a chance for the city to spend 200 and for for us to get a four hundred thousand dollar project well one of the things i think that we should be mindful of is 15 years ago that it was a volunteer effort that put it together the city gave the property obviously and has maintained and taken care of it and we've gotten a good life uh, span out of it. I sympathize with the consideration of not spending money, but where would we have been 15 years ago had we not built it? Uh, and it was a volunteer thing that we actually got quite a significant return 
over the 15 years, even though the city didn't put anything into it, but land and the maintenance and upkeep of it. Uh, as I drive by going to the golf course, and I'll admit, I'm trying to keep the taxpayer uh, expense at the golf course down by playing as many rounds of golf at Old Fort Golf Course <laughs> as I can. Uh, it, it is one of the most utilized features at Old Fort Park consistently, other than, I, I think, uh, maybe the tennis courts currently, which again was a new expenditure which we didn't have to go into and, and certainly that we did. Uh, I think it's a tremendous benefit. Uh, you know, when you look at, at uh, a, a, an expenditure for something like this that you get a tremendous value for, you get a tremendous use for, you have next door to it, you have a pavilion and a, and a, a recreation area with uh, uh, facilities that are already there, I think it only enhances what we already have. And one of the ways you keep attracting people to come to Murfreesboro and make investments is to have things that nobody else has. And this has really been a, a good thing. I, I understand your point, Mr. Gilly. I really feel like we've benefited, though, for the last 15 years of, of having this facility. <laughs> Vice Mayor. You know, I, I've gotten, I'm on the Parks and Recreation Commission, Mr. Gilly, and, I, and I've received several phone calls early in the spring, and I think I passed them on to Mr. Goodwin about the condition of the Kids Castle. It, it was, uh, of course, it's a wooden structure that was built by volunteers many years ago. It had a lot of missing boards, missing uh, screws that were coming up. It, 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 it's in need of a lot of repair. Through, through the years, it's the, the weather and, and the use it's gotten, um, we're, we're going to have to do something. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like the, the, the swimming pool. I mean, you either got to fix it or tear it down or, or just close it. I mean, it's it's in need of a lot of repair. You know, and and, and you're getting it at 50 percent. I know it's all it's all our money. It's all taxpayers' money, but uh, we're getting a grant on this, and it, and this is. Un, I know we we look at not you know what we did for our budget. This is not. Uh, this is uh, this is bond money. This is not. It's different than looking at uh, uh, reoccurring expenses as as you would give uh, raises for reoccurring expenses. You wouldn't do that with bond money. I think we all agree on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think we have an opportunity to do this with this two hundred thousand dollar grant. I'd hate to see us miss that opportunity. <coughs> and, and maybe next year, when the if economy got better, we'll have to spend the entire four hundred thousand or whatever. Uh, to do it ourselves. I mean, I appreciate what you're saying, and I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're in a we're in a, a we're somewhere in here where we got to do something. Ms. Harris, uh, you know, with the economy like it is today, which is really down, uh, the government. I think I read somewhere where they were predicting 1.1 million dollars down for next year, possibly even more. Um, and I think the concept of the kids' castle is fabulous. In fact, when they were building it, I hit a couple of nails myself. Did you? And uh, the community really came together. Um, right now, with the weather like it is, and in our general fund, we're talking about possibly taking this out of, we don't know the unforeseen things like, for instance, I think I heard last night where the hospital air conditioner was out, lightning hit that. So a lot of unforeseen things, we have schools, uh, where we're running, I'm sure the AC is hard as we can run. Uh, we have um, other city offices, and we still have employees that are five employees that are unemployed with the city. I, I would like one or two things. I would either like to see us hold off right now on this until February, when we can see where our tax revenue is, or either uh, reduce this amount. Uh, I understand the fact that we are getting a grant, but uh, like maybe like this grant came around, another grant will come around, and I understand uh, the need for it, but with the economy and everything, and I just would like to see us hold off. I'm not saying not do it, but hold off. Well, if I give you uh, maybe one, one quick observation, you know, the deadline that's before us right now is an August 13th deadline to turn in the grant. Uh, we'll have to wait to see if we get uh, selected to be awarded uh, a grant. Uh, if we're awarded the grant, then we're going to need to bid the project out and come right back before the mayor and council to say, you know, ask for your approval on a construction project. Uh, so there is still another opportunity for you to take a look at the project. 
Um, Ms. Harris, one of the things we've seen with the downturn in the economy is, is that our parks provide free recreation for the community. And so with that, you know, folks are you know, spending more time in our parks, enjoying our parks more, and uh, we see this as certainly an, an asset and something that's contributed to the community for a long time. Uh, but there will be another opportunity for you all to see it before the project ever gets funded. Right now it's a request for a, for a grant application. I think, th I think that's a good point you brought out. A lot of people you know, can't afford to go on vacation. A lot of people are staying home. I think what what are the numbers for the uh, the new pool? I mean, we were talking about that earlier. I believe it was thirty six thousand participants in the first six weeks. First month, month thirty six thousand participants. Wow, that's amazing. Well, and frankly, Kid Castle is in such a bad shape that a lot of people are not going there because it is. Uh, it, I'm not going to say it's just rough. It, oh, it I'm is. not saying I'm against it. I was just saying if we can see if we can maybe repair the bare necessities right now it, with the economy like it is. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, my son used to go there, so, you know, it's a great facility. And like I said, I hit a bunch of nails there. But I was just saying with the economy like it is. Sure. Yeah. Um, if I could, um, one of the, the things that we've really been working on in our department over the past couple of years especially is really looking at our strategic action plans and looking for community input. And playgrounds is one of the things that was always at the top of the list. One of the things that when people ask where our priorities should be in parks and recreation, it, it was playgrounds. And I think that um, for Kids Castle, it has seen hundreds of thousands of, of, of kids come since, since um, You've hit those nails, and since many other people put that together, our, our maintenance department, I'll be honest, they've, they've struggled for, for a while now um, making those repairs as we've had to remove elements. You know, say if there were 30 elements in there before, there might only be 12 to 15 now because as, as they've become where they were becoming more and more unsafe, we've had to take them out, board over the place where there used to be something fun. Um, that area is honestly getting to the point where if we don't do something that includes a total renovation, we won't be able to patch it any longer safely and without Can causing we, a liability. If we, if we apply for the grant in this, in, in, in the meantime, if we, if we get the grant, can we always say later, you know, two weeks from now that, hey, we've decided not to do it, we don't want the grant, thank you, and we'll just do it later. Is that, is that an option, Mr. Lines? I mean, can we do that? I mean, I, I, I don't want to. Once we commit, we committed. To what? That's what I want to know. Once we committed, we committed. Yeah. That's the let me let Mr. Goodwin answer that one. Good evening, Council. Um, the way the grants generally were run is you submit a grant, and based on the number of grants that are submitted, uh, for example, they may have $3 million to award, and they may have $10 million of request. Um, every legislator would like to get a piece of that grant in their particular area, uh, obviously. And there's going to be some posturing and maneuvering, I guess, to get money in, uh, in particular areas. And sometimes what I've seen them do is come back and say that we know that you applied for 200000 but what we've done to spread the wealth, so to speak, is we're making the maximum grant 300000 So uh, do you still want to um, have the grant award at basically half of what that would be, 150, or does that kill the project? Um, and it's up to the city to make that decision. Obviously, if they give a full award and Murfreesboro, you know, would like to withdraw that, they could do that um, before the contract is signed. What they do is they go through the point awards, they look at the grants, and those grantees are notified. Before the city is obligated to that grant, there is a contract between the Department of Environment and Conservation, State of Tennessee, and the city of Murfreesboro. Generally speaking, it takes about three months for those grants to process, which means that from this point, it would probably be October, November or so before that grant was awarded to the city. Using Mr. Lyons' um, 
explanation about ex bidding the project, then what we would do is, let's say that the grant was awarded in October, November. Obviously, it's going to take us about six to eight weeks, maybe 12, to even get plans together to build. And then we're looking at probably somewhere around a two to three month period for building. What that does is that puts us in mid to late spring uh, for the opening of that playground at that point. Question there. Uh, yes, Mr. Young. What's the expected life expectancy of this new park as proposed with the modern safety equipment on it? Is it 15 years? Mr. Young, generally, playground equipment will, uh, remanufactured playground equipment uh, will last anywhere from 20 to 30 years. Uh, generally, what happens is they go out of compliance. With the playground that we have now, it was a self built. Uh, hammered nails, Ms. Scales mentioned that she went out there and drove a few nails. Uh, those types of playgrounds age a lot quicker. Generally the age of that playground is around 10 years. And what happens is you start losing pieces out of compliance in the first five years because it is a man-made um, structure instead of a manufactured structure you can't do the modification to that structure like you could a manufactured structure. With a manufactured structure, you can call the manufacturer and say, we need an a, a compliance update. They will send you a retrofit kit. Uh, it may be the slide's two inches taller. It may mean that it needs a bigger platform for the children to start before they go down the slide, those kind of things. But um, with this one, the difficulty that we've had, not only with maintenance, because maintenance has been probably four to five times that of a regular playground, is the fact that once something breaks or once something has to be retrofitted, we can't do that uh, because of that the structure has itself. To be taken out of it. That has to be taken out, and that's what Ms. Jackson was referring to is the fact that what we started with was a grand, grandiose playground, and it was wonderful. It brought the community together. Um, gosh, you know, I was out there all week long, and um, it was a great effort. And, but the, the reverse side of that is it was very maintenance heavy in the fact that things went out of compliance pretty early in the life of that playground, and now we're probably five years past the life of the playground, and it's still a popular slide. And Mr. Bratcher mentioned the fact that we get numerous phone calls all the time about Kids Castle. You know, why is this broken? Why, you know, I put money into it. I went out there and put sweat equity into it, and we want to bring that back to the community, and we just think it's a worthwhile project at this point. Other questions? And with this funding, are we enlarging things on adding things or just repairing things? Or? We would be more replacing things, Ms. Scales. Um, and of course we would try to make it as equal to what Ms. Jackson said, an equal play value. Um, and what you have to do is you have to look at the elements that are out there. There's play elements for two through five and then there's elements that are five through 12. And so you have to look at equal value within those. Some of the first things that came out was some of the swings, and that's some of the things that kids really like the most. But, um, you know, it's just a sad fact that that's what we had to do. So what we are asking for tonight is permission to meet the deadline for tomorrow. That's correct. To apply for this grant, not necessarily are we going to do all these repairs, use all the money, and well, match? We think if we do the repairs that are necessary, we would use the money. But there's, like I said, you know, it, it is an application point at this process. And the deadline's I'm, tomorrow. Right. I understand we, that. We've got the grant prepared. Uh, we have worked on that. Um, and 
if if the council does approve this tonight, then we will submit that grant tomorrow. Uh, the mayor would have to sign several things in there. Uh, one of the things that um, is a commitment um, that they're looking for, financial commitment from the city, is the resolution or an ordinance, which says to the Department of Environment and Conservation that if awarded, then the city would be willing to put the money up for that project. Kind of like building a road, uh, especially like Medical Center Parkway. The state wasn't going to build the Medical Center Parkway interchange on I-24 to the old Manson Pike, even though the city said we were we were going to have Medical Center Parkway there. They didn't they didn't agree to build it until we had that road on the ground ready to go, where they could build their interchange to that road. They they they're going to want a commitment from us. I'd like to see us if there's some way we could just go ahead and get this apply for this grant. You're looking at 200,000 over 30 year lifespan. That's a little over six thousand dollars a year investment. And you've had a free. It's not going to be as nice as this one. For the last 15 years, it didn't cost you anything except you keep taking part of it out of service. Mr. There. Mayor, one of, one of the things I failed to mention, we went back and we looked at some of the old records. The estimated cost of Kids Castle um, in 1995 was $176,000. So here's 15 years later, you're going to try to re not improve and replace. And, that, and again, remember it had the picnic areas and those kind of things around it when it was built. What is our track record when we usually apply for grant? It's generally good. We just received a uh, $80,000 RTP grant for the renovation of the Greenway, which was an 80% grant. Can you get, grant. if we approve this tonight, our next meeting, can you have some pictures of the present? And that'll give us an opportunity yes, to go sir. out and look at it and ourselves or have some well, I mean, it's in bad shape. Let, let, me, let me say this, too. Um, it's really important for us as a department to involve the community back into this project. I've talked to the past co-chairs, uh, Ms. Steen and Mr. Beckwith, and they're willing to come back and, and we'd like to get a committee together again uh, to look back into what we need to do to bring this back to the community. Uh, we want this to make a pro be a, a work in progress, so to speak, and we want to involve the community back into the process. Uh, there may be efforts at that point that the community could go back out and raise some additional funds. And mm -hmm. if those funds could be raised, those could be used as our matching funds for the grant. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there may be an opportunity for that. Uh, there's a three-year uh, commitment, and we've got to spend that grant within three years. Uh, obviously, we'd like to have the playground ready for by next spring of 2011. But there, there's nothing that says that we can't engage the public and come back to the council with a proposal uh, to see what we need to do. But we would have that money in place uh, to do that work with if we needed to. On a scale from 1 to 10, how safe would you say it is right now with 10 being the safe? Safe. It's safe, Mrs. Harris. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pleasurable as it used to be, but it is safe. Yes, ma'am. And they have elements that you well, can't use anymore, well, and they've been taken out if they were the unsafe. Scales, one, of the, one of the things from a risk management standpoint, I have to tell you, is we go out there pretty much on a daily basis, make an evaluation of different things, and, and do what we have to do to make that playground safe. Um, now, does that mean that it doesn't take a lot more maintenance? It does take a lot more maintenance. Um, but what you're doing is you're eventually ending up with just a shale. I mean, there's nothing, nothing to play with. There's nothing to play on, really, is what you're, you're, you're going into an area that uh, you can't go up the steps anymore, you can't do certain things, and it's, it's becoming not a playground. Yeah. And I, here again, I'm not against the Correct. kids' castle. I, I understand. I'm just looking at the economy and how many people are out of work and 
the money we're talking about spending right now. Uh, and that's why I was asking about and, the and, grants. I'm not to that. Go along, it, it, excuse me for, but to go along with what you were saying, come back and look in February. That will be about the time, somewhere around there, I would think, that we'll be shoring up some of the plans and so forth, uh, and maybe coming back to the council at that point to get a commitment for construction or so forth. At that yeah, time. that's why I was asking. Uh, applying for the grant, and if we get the grant, if we could scale back. We that's could. If, it, if that's the wishes of the council, we could do that. We'll have to uh, burn a little midnight oil and get the legal department to redraft the resolution uh, because it has to be a part of the grant. I mean, applying for the grant is just filling out the application, but as far as what the city, uh, what we are willing to spend or what we can spend uh, economically, feasible to spend right now, we can scale back. That was my question. Not necessarily we're going to do that. You know, we can possibly scale back, but as far as getting permission to apply for the grant is what you're asking for tonight. Is that correct? Uh, and it has to have an amount in there right. with the resolution. Right. I, mean, I think getting back to what, what you mentioned earlier and, and what Ms. Harris may be getting at is that if we apply for, for the 200-200 match in this situation. We're approved for the 200-200 match. Do we still have an opportunity at that point to say, wait a minute, we can't accept all of what you've offered because we don't think we can afford the, the full and match we When the, when the contract up, comes in, Mr. Gilly, that will be the point. There's still another opportunity to look at that and say, you've offered us this much, but looking at this right now, we just cannot make the match. Um, and, and I would anticipate the contract, like I said, October, November, I would think. And there's probably, like you're saying, there is the opportunity or the, there may be even the likelihood, depending on how much money they have to allocate and how many applications are made, they may come back and say that the most you can get is 100, 150, there, which means our match has automatically been reduced to 100 or that's, 150 that's correct. at that and, point. And right? we've seen that before, especially in economic times like this. Okay. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Young. I think we've had some good discussion tonight. We've uh, learned a lot about Kids Castle and its time frame and useful life and how important it is to the community. I, I think we need to uh, let the Recreation Department apply for this grant. With that, I'll move for approval. May I ask one question? Uh, second. Let's just, okay, we have a motion yeah, to second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. With the understanding that if approved, we still can go and look at what kind of work we're going to do and how much money we're going to spend. Yes, ma'am. We're going to walk you through that process. The contract. But oh, I understand. But my, I just want. I, I don't think we want to make an application if we don't think we're going to go ahead and go through with it. I'm honest, and I don't know whether they pay attention to Channel Three like many of our people do and and watch what we do. But I think it's disingenuous to to apply for a grant and say yeah. that we'll, we'll worry about this later on at some other time. The council, I think, ought to go on record and say that we're going to commit this money now or we're not going to go ahead with the grant. And that would be my suggestion to you. I'm certainly open to that. I did not hear that in Mr. Young's motion. And if he'd like to change his motion, I understand that. But I, I would, I thought your motion was we apply for the grant with the understanding that we're going to match this if we receive the grant. That's exactly right. I, 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 I see no reason to amend my motion because that's what my intent was. Well, okay, Greg, I, I thought the motion was actually to approve the resolution. If we're talking about having a motion separate from approval of the resolution, right. we need to make that clear. Well, we have a request for approval to make the application for a grant. That's number one is what I no. thought we were going to do. Re that, that's what's in the resolution. Okay. So all we're voting to do is to adopt a resolution authorizing the application. Is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. And committing matching funds in the amount of $200,000 if awarded the grant. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Sections 1 and 2 of the resolution. And that's your motion? Yes, sir. And is that your second? Absolutely, yep. So there wouldn't be any going back. I mean, I don't, I mean. Well, then I can't vote for it. If, if it's not with the understanding we're going to have another opportunity to look at this before we spend it, that's one thing. But if we're saying this is the end, I'll be all, you give us 200000 we're well, if it loaded. comes in like you mentioned earlier, if it comes in at a, at a hundred, a hundred or hundred fifty, 
we're lowered anyway. But that's the, the, the grant provider doing that, not us taking that opportunity, depending on what our economic circumstances are at the time. Correct. Ms. McGann, I see a, a squint, a frown. Well, uh, Mr. Goodwin has certainly more experience directly with the grant givers, but in the grant applications I've looked at, it always says you can't spend more. I've never heard the state say we won't take it back. The requirement is that we spend as much as they spend, and if the council, in looking at the submittal from the Recreation Department, um, decides the scale of the project sh should be such that the bids come back, that it is less than that amount, uh, I, I think we would be able, we just have to commit uh, we're going to spend equally. The expectation is it will be at this scale of project, but I don't think we will be in trouble with the state if we give the money back. So we could scale back. You, yeah. If, we, if, if the size of the project didn't, didn't meet the size of what their grant was, that we could do whatever we wanted to at that point. So yeah. what? Less than. Less than. So what I was saying is correct, in my understanding. Is that correct? It, the process is such that before the contract is, uh, g the grant contract is signed with the state, and before the construction contract is signed with the bidder, it will come back to the council. That's correct. At both of those stages, it will come back to the council. And you could decide, no, we've thought about it, we're not going to take the grant at all. At that point, we might have lost the ability to reduce the scale of the grant um, if there was a problem with, with uh, the state having already given out the grants. But similarly, if you decide after getting more detailed information about what Kids Castle was and what you want it to be and what the estimated cost of getting what you want it to be is less than a $400,000 project, you could still do that. Another possibility that we often do with construction projects may or may not be appropriate for this one is to say this is what the base is and if depending on how the bids come in we'll want this ad alternate and if they come in really good we're going to want that ad alternate. So you could but start at a low number and see other additions if you decide to take them and add them you could do that. You know but the, the commitment is we that do we that, will we match the state's, state's commitment and that it will not exceed this amount. Right. The state's commitment won't exceed. That's that, what the you're talking about. Just common practice. That's what we do all the time. Yes, we do that with numerous grants. Right. Yes, sir. As, as long as those opportunities are going to be there, then that, that's fine. But I, I don't like looking at it from the attitude as we're lock loaded. Here's two hundred thousand. Regardless of what happens, it's going to get spent. Well, we're looking. We're, but what I think, uh, and I, I'm not putting words in the mayor's mouth, but we're looking at voting on this tonight. That's the only way we can vote on it because we don't have a contract. We don't have a grant either. Okay. Well, we can decide whatever we want to build based on whatever we want to do at the time. So adjustments can be made at a later date? If the council wants to, yes. We're just applying for the grant. Okay. I understand. Just want to get a good understanding. All right, do you have a motion and second? Any other questions or comments regarding the resolution? If not, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher? Aye. Mr. Gilley? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. This time we'll thank, thank you. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. And this time we'll consider recommendations of the Community Development Director with regards to Neighborhood Stabilization Program Purchase 510 point. I'm sorry. A program purchase at 510 Point Clear Drive in Smyrna, Tennessee. I didn't nail nails. I it? sawed things okay. like that. <laughs> Hundreds of things like that. Hundreds of things. <laughs> Hundreds, it seemed like. And I'm sure those are the things that still remain <laughs> out there in use. <laughs> one, we, one can only hope, Mr. Mayor. None of that was lost or has been lost over the years. Uh, you did I put your initials in all of them, didn't I you? Burn them, them well. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. In July 2009, the city signed an agreement with the uh, Tennessee Housing Development Agency to administer a $1.27 million uh, neighborhood stabilization grant on behalf of the Murfreesboro Rutherford County Continuum of Care. The uh, grant, which was submitted by the continuum, calls for creating permanent rental housing by purchasing, rehabbing, and transferring ownership of vacant, foreclosed, single-family residents to approved nonprofits. Um, 
the agencies are required then to rent these uh, properties uh, to income eligible persons. Um, on August 6, 2010, the Community Development Department submitted to Fannie Mae an offer for 510 Point Clear Drive in Smyrna for $165,000 plus closing costs using NSP funds. Our offer is contingent upon your approval and I recommend approving the purchase and authorizing the city manager to purchase, uh, sign the purchase contract and closing documents. When rehab is complete, we propose to transfer the property to the charter group, which is a nonprofit which operates in Smyrna. Um, we also expect this to be the very last project on this grant. All right. Sounds like an additional duty that Mr. Callow has undertaken on behalf of the residents of not only the city but the county. So are there any questions regarding this recommendation? No questions, Mayor. I move we approve the recommendation. Second. All right. You have a motion and second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time we'll consider, thank you, Mr. Callow, the recommendations of the Assistant City Manager with regards to Employee Health Plan Consultant. Mr. Cromley, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, tonight we're asking you to consider in a contract with the Cheryl Morgan firm, a health consulting business out of Covington, Kentucky. Uh, one of the most desirable things about working for the city is the benefit package that we offer to our employees. It is also one of the most expensive components of operating the city government. Uh, we're projecting for next budget year, the current budget year, something in excess of $10 million for the employee health plan alone. As we went through the budget in great detail this year, it became obvious that the health plan was one place that we had to focus some additional efforts in order to control costs, not necessarily to reduce costs, but to control them for the future. Uh, we've s looked around in the marketplace and believe the firm of Cheryl Morgan and Associates is the right firm to assist us in preparing a long-range plan uh, for future adjustments to our benefits. We're not proposing cuts to the employee's benefit plan at this point in time. We believe there are ways we can procure it more efficiently, we believe there are changes in the marketplace that we can take advantage of that will reduce their costs and our costs. Uh, it is still an 80-20 sharing arrangement with the city picking up 80% of those costs, the employee picking up 20%. <coughs> uh, Mr. Morgan's firm has agreed to come to work for the city on a three-year basis for a flat fee of $33,000 a year. Any income derived from working on the city's business would be returned to the city. Uh, the $33,000 is the only compensation from Mr. Morgan's firm. I would point you in the contract to a small change in paragraph 16. Uh, in that paragraph, we had said for any reason should the city have had to uh, pursue a legal action with the firm that they would compensate the city for our legal costs. They asked that we insert the word reasonable fees in there, and we have done that. That is a change to the contract since uh, your packets went out earlier this week. We recommend your approval. Be glad to try to answer any questions. So it so shall pay all expenses. It shall pay reasonable. All reasonable expenses. All reasonable. Is that, yeah. Is that from the attorney's point of view? or the <laughs> On behalf of mine and Ms. McGann's profession, I, I'm insulted that they would even feel that's necessary <laughs> to, uh, to make a caveat known. <laughs> Let the minutes reflect that in parentheses, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have this recommendation. That may narrow down to no money. Yes. <laughs> and this was already a budget. It was uh, in a budget that we passed anyway, right? This is a budgeted item. Yes, it certainly is. Is there a motion? Mayor, hearing no questions, I move for approval. Second. You have a motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time the council should consider the appointment of a city treasurer. As you are aware, there are five positions 
uh, which are filled by the city council directly, uh, those being the city manager, the city treasurer, the city recorder, the uh, attorney, and the city judge. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a change that we have anticipated and asked the legislature to allow us, if possible, to allow the same person to uh, occupy these two positions. Uh, the city recorder and the city treasurer. You have before you a, a little bit of an explanation from the city manager that I think fairly well states the uh, ability to appoint the same person to two of these positions. And um, if you are interested in doing that tonight, uh, I would make that recommendation to you that we appoint Melissa Wright, who is the city recorder, and ask her to fill the position of city treasurer at the same time. Uh, we have traditionally had the city's personnel director uh, occupy this treasurer role because of uh, some revenues that come into the city through the hotel motel tax, some separation there, but I believe with her record and the record of our finance department that it is logical to ask her to take on this additional uh, title uh, and I make that recommendation to you. So moved. Second. All right, a motion and second. Evidently, Ms. Wright has been out uh, campaigning during the... Uh, <laughs> just begging for more work. She looks very for, excited about it. More things <laughs> to do. You see great ads, too. <laughs> That's very commendable, Ms. Wright. Some of the best yard signs That's I've right. seen. That's right. <laughs> TV was outstanding. <laughs> okay, All right, you have a motion and a second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright, our new city treasurer. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. I'm assuming you will assume this title immediately. Yes, now, Mayor, I will. No, okay. Hey, Rob, uh, give us some technology upgrades, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you, council members. At this time, Council is to schedule a date and to discuss a proposed 2010-2014 capital improvement plan. And also, I'd like to add at this time to set perhaps a public hearing on a liquor license that Ms. Wright uh, wants to bring to us tonight at this time. So if you talk to us, Ms. Wright, about a, uh, the capital improvement plan. Well, I'll, I'll tackle the capital right, improvement Mr. plan. Lyons. She may uh, speak about the uh, liquor license. Uh, staff has been working hard on the capital improvement plan. Uh, we traditionally have done that in a workshop uh, with you. We'd like to propose uh, the date of August the 25th at 4 p.m. in room 218. All right, council members. What date? Is that? 25th, Wednesday 4 p.m., room 218. Yeah. Is there a motion? Set that down. So moved. Second. Second. All right, you have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gelly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Now, Ms. Wright, if you want to talk to us about this liquor license that we need to work on. Mayor, we need to set a public hearing for Memorial Liquor and Wine, which is be a new location at 3411 Memorial Boulevard. It's at the uh, new Publix shopping center out on Memorial. And he's trying, the applicant's trying to meet the one and only meeting in September from ABC. And that's the only date I can come up with that will meet our advertising requirements and get his work to ABC in time. Otherwise, he would have to wait to October. And that would be a Wednesday at 4 o'clock. We're already going to be meeting that day. It's just a day. Day and time, we don't ordinarily have these. So it would be setting the same date as the hearing that we just, or the public hearing that we just, or the date to discuss the CIP. Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there a motion that we set this public hearing and advertise it at the same time as our capital improvement plan meeting? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll hear from the Assistant City Attorney with regards to Three Rivers of Rutherford County LLC Interim Repair Agreement with the Travelers Insurance Company. Mr. Ives, welcome. Good evening, Mayor Bragg, members of council. 
Uh, back in July of 2008, uh, the city called uh, performance bonds that had been posted by three, Re three rivers of Rutherford. Uh, there was approximate, uh, approximately a million dollars total of bonds that were called at that time uh, over water and sewer work, uh, actually not water, it was sewer work, street uh, work, and uh, storm drainage work uh, for the three big sections of three rivers, uh, sections one, two, and three. Uh, work that, uh, as I said, there, we've had substantial road failures out there uh, in the area, the primary one being uh, uh, Case and Lane uh, that was constructed as part of this project, uh, along with uh, uh, the s sewer work uh, and the storm drainage work. Since that time, we've been in negotiations both with the Three Rivers principals, uh, their general contractor, uh, and also Travelers, who's the bonding company for Three Rivers. Uh, in a year later, in July of 2009, Three Rivers uh, entered into bankruptcy uh, to avoid uh, the bank foreclosing on, on the vast majority of their property out there. Uh, late in 2009, uh, Mr. Griffith, city engineer, uh, and I advised travelers that some work needed to be done on Cason Lane in order to prevent uh, what we saw as a likelihood of additional road damage during the winter wet season. And we were concerned that we were actually getting close to having to close Cason Lane uh, in some sections and reroute traffic. Uh, travelers declined to undertake that work and so the city had to do work performed through its annual paving or its annual construction contractor. Uh, after the work was completed, we sent invoices to travelers uh, for 150 percent of the amount of the work that uh, the, our, of the amount invoiced to us by the contractor. That was pursuant to a term in the uh, uh, the development contract that Three Rivers had signed that we believed allowed us to uh, collect uh, that at 150 percent. After some further negotiations, travelers uh, didn't feel that they uh, were uh, obligated to pay it at the 150 percent rate. Uh, and some more negotiations, they agreed that they would pay it at 125 percent uh, if we would make a final settlement as to these costs. And so uh, that agreement is attached to this uh, uh, tonight, we're asking for your approval. Uh, we are settling only the payment uh, of these invoices. Uh, these invoices uh, totaled about $170,000, and so the payment from travelers will be just a little over uh, $200,000. Uh, according to uh, our belief is that there is still approximately $800,000 worth of performance bonds in place. Uh, because of the fact that there were uh, discussions at, uh, immediately prior to us calling the bonds, there were discussions about reducing the amounts of two of the bonds. So there is a dispute as to whether uh, there's a 800,000 left or approximately 600,000 left. In any, way, any event, there's a substantial amount left, and we are continuing to work with travelers. They have actually asked us to uh, get them cost uh, or not cost, but to get them uh, um, construction details for the repairs that are necessary and then for a final surface coat of asphalt to be put over that part of Case and Lane that's in uh, Section 1. And that's the area of Case and Lane that's being traveled uh, most heavily uh, with the increasing uh, occupancy at the assisted living center uh, that recently opened there on, on just off of Case and Lane. And they are so also continuing to uh, build and sell some of the uh, condos. Uh, I think it's Stonebridge at Three Rivers is the condo area there. So as, as that traffic is increasing, uh, they're having uh, some problems there on that section of the road, and it's important to get that done. If travelers does not elect to do the work themselves, uh, we will most likely be proceeding with that work uh, and then claiming uh, under the remaining bond on, on that section. So with all that, uh, we would ask your approval of this uh, interim agreement. Uh, again, it will settle the three invoices that we have sent to travelers, uh, but everything else will stay open. Any questions from Mr. Ives regarding this agreement? <coughs>
If not, if, is there a motion that we accept this agreement? I so move. Second. I have a motion and second. Any questions? If not, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gailey. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you. And I, I, I want to just point out that our legal department, I know many uh, people uh, possibly do come in contact with the legal department for any number of reasons, but our legal department has a number of different issues that they face and certainly in protecting the taxpayers' interests and public safety is one of them. And I want to thank Ms. McGann and her staff, Mr. Hives, for the work that they do uh, each and every day. Uh, it's very difficult to comprehend the types of issues that come to the legal department, but uh, I, they do an outstanding job, and I certainly do appreciate uh, their efforts in this regard, especially in this uh, recommendation and agreement that you brought forward tonight. That was a direct savings to the taxpayers. That's exactly right. Excellent and job. Something that somebody agreed to do and then somebody didn't have an opportunity and it saves the taxpayers from having to pick up a liability. So our city staff for many years has uh, I've often been criticized for making it so difficult for people to, to do business uh, in certain areas, but in many instances, uh, they've worked to protect the taxpayers' interests in having facilities and infrastructure in place uh, without it being at the city's expense. So uh, my, my appreciation to both of you and your staff. Thank you so All right, beer permit applications. Ms. Wright, the city treasurer and city recorder. Mayor, we have a few tonight. We have a convenience store at 2898 South Church Street, Suite C. We have a restaurant at 123 Southeast Broad Street. Those have both met all of our requirements. We have two special events, one by the MTSU Alumni Foundation at 1124 Rucker Lane and another uh, being done by a local restaurant at the Buffus Harley-Davidson 2250 Northwest Broad Street. The uh, MTSU event has met our requirements. The one at Bumpus Harley-Davidson has met everything but the final inspections. They won't set up until tomorrow morning, so they won't be able to do that, and the event is tomorrow night. And they'll right. do that uh, tomorrow after they're called. All right, since all of these meet the uh, requirements, uh, except for the one regarding the final inspection, uh, is there a motion that we accept these beer permit applications? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilley. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. You have before you the list of statements to be considered for payment, and I believe the city manager has a recommendation from the fire department that he'd like to make in addition to what is on this list or maybe in addition to what is already there. Mr. Lyons. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bragg. Uh, you'll notice there are two items on your revised uh, list of bills um, that deal with uh, CO oximeters and automatic external defibrillators. Uh, this spring, the fire department received a grant to fund uh, the AEDs and the CO oximeters uh, for the fire department. And that grant was awarded. Uh, the city budgeted the matching portion of that grant um, in the annual budget. Uh, however, uh, the actual award of that contract has not yet taken place. So the recommendation to you this evening is uh, to accept uh, the contract and the award of the bid for those two items. Uh, the list of bills would actually pay uh, for those items. Uh, this was a grant that paid for uh, almost half of this equipment of the city providing uh, the balance of the funding for it. All right, you have this recommendation to accept the contract and award the bid for these items for the fire department. Is there any questions for Mr. Lyons regarding this recommendation? So moved. Second. All right, you have a motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilley. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. So now you have before you the revised list of statements to be paid. Is there a motion that we pay the bills? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilley. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. I have no board and commission appointments to make. 
uh, this evening. Is there other business from the staff or from council to come before the council at this time? I would like to mention uh, to you uh, that each uh, fall, September and October, we in the last eight years that we have done a city manager performance evaluation. Um, it is comes time again to plan that evaluation for this year and to review Mr. Lyon's performance as a city manager. Uh, we did do him on a kind of an interim basis the last uh, last September and October when we talked and had a uh, public performance evaluation. I'd like to recommend to you that we do that again. Uh, I will send you out a form uh, which is the same form that we have used for the last eight years to see that that's the same type of evaluation you'd like to go through this year. What we've done primarily is send that form out, have you fill it out, have you rate the city manager. Uh, on a numerical scale, make whatever comments based on the 14 areas of evaluation that we look at. Uh, then we compile that, furnish it to the council, give you a week to look at it, and then we have a public meeting to discuss the evaluation in you, room 218. You should say rake him or rake, rate him. No, ra well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is your choice. You may rake or rate. You, you may provide your own rake or you may rate him. Okay. So I uh, intend to do that again, so I'm just giving you the... Uh, uh, notice that we'll go through that process again if that is your wish as a council if you wish to do that again That's not I'm recommending that we do it, but if you don't want to do it We we can certainly stop but if you want to then I want to make sure that you're all comfortable with the methodology that we have used if you have other recommendations that you would like to make uh, to the rest of the council when we go through that uh, process certainly you're entitled to do that if you want to change the form or change the process with willing to look at that council can make a decision whether they want to do that or not that's all I have and anything else from the council or from staff if not you're adjourned <laughs> <laughs>